So guys, today back from a video on the channel. Today we have the Newcastle United vs Spurs preview. A massive, massive game back at St James's Park. We've only got three home games left, so we've got to make every one count. Tottenham at home, tough game. They're in some good form in the top four. Newcastle has still got you on their hands. We'll have to wait and see what happens. If you could leave a like, boy, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It would mean a lot if you could do so. Anyways, lads, let's get into an hour. Let's start off by looking at Tottenham Hotspur. And as well, boys, without speaking about anything, for this game, Newcastle United are going to be wearing a kit one off. We did it last season with Brighton away. I don't actually know why. If it's every Tottenham kit links has some sort of colour clash with Newcastle, I really don't know why. But apparently, a one off kit is going to be getting used for the game versus Tottenham. So, let's speak, speak about it all now. Tottenham Hotspur, they've got a big win on Sunday and moves them into the top four for the first time in a in a long time. Villa have been in there, cemented there for a long time and they've got a game land on Villa now and could potentially do something. Um, really, I don't think they are in the title race, but only 10 points behind. I can't obviously say Man City, Liverpool are, are also dropping 10 points, but... Um, they've done so well obviously over the years have always been that struggle they're still waiting for that trophy and won a trophy since 2008 but under um, Ange Posoglu Pos they've done really really well I think I think they're a tough team to play against don't get us wrong they've had some funny results there and there but I think some decisions probably haven't went their way if we look at their league form at the minute this since this year so like 2024 in the league they have let's have a look though they drew to Man United beat Brentford drew to Everton beat Brighton um, got beat to Wolves in the at home um, I they got beat away as well didn't they but beat Palace beat Villa got beat to Fulham beat Luton drew to West Ham beat Forest for a top four run it's, it's decent form um, we've seen Man City forms a little bit like that they get draws there and there but they are not letting really a dangerous side. Obviously, at the start of the season, they went unbeaten and then lost four in the five. Lost five. Four, no, lost four out of five and drew that game versus Man City. So they went on a bit of funny form, but they're always going to be a tricky, tricky team, obviously. And they have obviously got some very good players. If I have a look at their team now, look at it from what they played against um, Nottingham Forest, you got Viango and Goal. He's done very good this season very good goalkeeper Pedro Powell got his first goal this season he's in my FPL team saved us with the points but it's their defence where I think Tottenham have improved on massively players like Ben Davies and Eric Dyer were still getting games last season now having Pedro Powell Romero Van der Ven and, and Destiny Ondogi very very strong defence at and they've improved massively in the midfield you've got Saw and Basuma I think that's probably Tottenham's no, I wouldn't say worst position. Of the, they've got Benton who's a very good player, but he's had two big injuries and struggles. I think in the summer, I think a big centre midfielder is needed for Tottenham, but going forward, Brendan Johnson's been a good signing for them since Tottenham Forest. He's got seven goals and five assists this season. James Madison was out for a period of time, but done very well in recent weeks getting back into the team. Obviously, really, he shouldn't play. He should have got sent off against um, Nottingham Forest for a punch on on Yates but it is what it is Timo Werner's came in and, and looked to probably stay at Tottenham I think he is a good player Timo Werner I've always have even at Chelsea always struggle to defend the back of the net but he's, his vision of the game is very good and I think people don't say that because he's a striker and doesn't score goals and obviously human son's human son he'll guarantee your goals so it will be a tricky one for Newcastle obviously Tottenham to play on the break give all the pace they've gone obviously they did beat with 4-1 at their ground back in December so a little bit of revenge obviously I think they were on a bit of revenge on us obviously last time they came to St James's Park it was a a thumping 6-1 they got absolutely thumped by Newcastle we were 5-0 up in 21 minutes so it'll be a stadium where Tottenham it's a stadium where we had one Tottenham have struggled over the years at St James's honestly off the top yeah the only time I can remember them winning was that 3-1 win in the 1920 season during lockdown and then the 17-18 season and then 18 night away thinking of it over the past couple of years, though, we've done quite well against them at home, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. But Tottenham Dogs being that bogey team where we've always done something against them, especially away from home, was a surprise that we got beat by so many 4 1 this season. But we've always tended to do quite well at their place, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. But we'll speak about the two, and obviously, we've, last, last time we played was against Fulham. 
We'll have to speak about the about the two now. So then Newcastle, last time out, 1-0 win versus Fulham. Don't get us wrong, I thought the performance was shocking in the first half, and I think you could see Eddie Howe had a right goal them in the 20th minute where I think Dubravka went down. I think he, I think that Dubravka deliberately went down because Eddie Howe was not happy with the performance against Fulham. But sometimes when you're in the race for something, sometimes in football where you're going for Europe or you're going for relegation, you might not tend to play well, but the result tends to come and that was a game like that against Fulham we didn't play well didn't deserve to win Fulham had so many chances didn't take them Newcastle get two chances take them both by the way and the the, the first one should have got should have counted by Fabian Shaw and then obviously Bruno rounded it up in a massive one nil win it's still it's still on for Newcastle but the thing I'm keep sick of hearing is every game is a must win every game is a must win which in hindsight it is and I think what Newcastle fans need to remember, we can't be relying on our people's results. We can't sit there and go, wait, West Ham got lucky because they beat Wolves and they shouldn't have. Yeah, they shouldn't have. But if we don't get you, it's not because of the case of, oh, well, West Ham won that game and we didn't. We weren't good enough during the whole course of the season. We we picked up three, three points for possible 18 against Bournemouth, Luton and Everton. If we don't get you, that's the reason why. Because you don't pick up points like that. And it's put into the predicament now where you're playing teams like Tottenham and, and we've got some tough, still, still, in my opinion, some tough teams coming up with the injuries that we've got. Um, every game is a must win, but every game will be tough. We've only got three home games left. Tottenham, Sheffield United and Brighton. From them three games, I think if we all want to get Europe, even if it is conference getting to eight and depends what happens in the Europa League with Liverpool, if we do get eight and get Europe in, in conference, for me, out of these home games, you've got to be picking up at least seven points if you if you want to go for Europe. Obviously, we've got teams around with shoulder. Chelsea have got games in hand. Brighton, you've got West Ham ahead of where Man United um, could slack off any time. It's so tight around that area where we've got this point of the season where every game is a must win if Newcastle want that but in my head in my in my eyes if Newcastle don't achieve that it's got now to do with how poorly or how we didn't pick up results towards the end of the season it's due to the whole course of the season we went through too many sticky patches during Christmas around February time like it took us three months to win my first home game and it's like stuff like that where it's going away now to must win where we should have been winning them games beforehand. But speaking more on the fact of the Tottenham game, Newcastle early kick off. Obviously, last time on a Saturday, Newcastle played at home. We had an early kick off against West Ham. Can't remember the last time we won an early kick off before then. So, Tottenham at home, early kick off. I mean, the tune should be up for it. There should be, obviously, the injuries that we've got are, are not good. But I've made some changes to the, to the, to the team from what started against. Um, against Fulham so I'll obviously say them in in the um, video tomorrow but if I've got to give a prediction for Saturday it's a tough one to call because Tottenham are in good form they need to cement top four obviously they can't go over the title top four is their, their goal now Villa are on, are on the show um, with the same points it, it's going to be it's a, it's a tough ask it's a tough ask to even think of the outcome, I think Newcastle's line up is pretty much how you'd probably expect it. Maybe there's a couple of changes like what I've, what I've said, but I think we all know how top we're going to come to the game, play on the break, play with pace and try and attack Newcastle as much as I can and, and let their quality and defence keep get them a clean. It'll be a tough game, don't get us wrong. I'm not going to give a prediction because my head says we're going to get beat, but my heart says that we're doing so it's one of them. But that's going to be the end of the preview, boys. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all for the predicting tomorrow. And then we have got the vlog out on Saturday. Make sure make sure I leave a like, boys. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all in the next one. Yeah,